and because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, but do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Right before walking down the front aisle here today, I was looking up at the picture of Catherine, 1928 to 2022. It's amazing when you see somebody who was born in the 20s and who was blessed to have over 90 years on this earth. Longevity is a blessing, after all. There's not a ton of people who could say that they lived into their mid-90s. If you lived into your 90s, you see a lot of changes in your life. Some good, maybe some not so good, but you do see a lot of changes. After living over 90 years, you experience a lot of joys, like seeing your grandchildren grow up, maybe even have kids of their own. You see the world progress in certain ways for the better. But also with longevity comes the other side of that coin where sometimes you experience things that are not so good, like the loss of a loved one, perhaps a spouse or a child. You see the world becoming increasingly complex. You see problems arise in which there are no easy solutions. Catherine almost made her 94th birthday. That close. She was that close to it. She had 93 years. She was just a couple of weeks away from her 94th birthday. So for all intents and purposes, we'll say that she lived 94 years. And having lived that long, she undoubtedly saw a lot of changes in the world, even within her own family. In short, she lived a very full life. Maybe not a, a charmed life, not an easy life necessarily, not one without difficulties, but a life that was full. And the more and more I thought about her last night as I was writing this, I, I really think she lived it fully for her family. Above all else. Family was integral to who she was. It is for the family that she worked at the H.B. Reese Company for over 30 years so that she could help her husband Tennyson make ends meet financially. It was because of her love for family that she made her own kiddos go to church, uh, make sure that they uh, could learn something about God and whether they wanted to follow uh, him in their life. It was because of her love for family that she tried her hardest to be a good mom, occasionally be a little bit of a worry work, but always with care on her heart. And it was because of her love for family that Catherine did her best to be a good grandmother. Family was a priority. Again, I think it's for this reason that she was a little bit more of a worry work than your average person. She wanted always to hold family close and protect them, always making sure that she had a little bit of knowledge as to where they were, making sure they were okay, making sure they were safe. Catherine could at times be what we call today as a helicopter kind of parent even as her children. We'll take a little bit of a pause for a second.
So that would have had her worried, uh, talking about Catherine and being a little bit of a worry word. Uh, there's a reason, because I think with all family, don't we just want to hold on close and, and protect them? Again, she wasn't suffocating, but she always didn't care about her family because she knew how important family is. And Catherine, she always loved to travel to. With her husband, Tennyson, she used to always love to travel. You know, a lot of people, when they retire, um, they prefer to stay at home, not do as much, but not so much Catherine. Whenever uh, she and Tennyson would find a deal for a cruise, they would go there, travel here and there, and I think she really, really, really loved to do that because it allowed her the time just to be with her beloved. Spend time with him, be together with him, and just appreciate the fact that they can be together and see many parts of the world. Like many people of her generation, Catherine loved Elvis, loved Elvis impersonators. If ever one was around to see him perform, she would try her best to see him. She also loved roller skating. Uh, even into her upper ages, when a lot of people start, uh, stop doing it, she would uh, still continue to do that. She particularly loved more skating with her husband. She loved to bake, loved going to Arizona, and she had a particular dislike it when people would do something daring, especially if it was a family member. She would not like it if people would push the envelope. She tried to live her life simply and safely, and she wanted those that she loved most to live that way as well. It was comforting to her. And of course, Catherine's faith was important to her. She enjoyed the fellowship in the church. She, uh, she really loved the assurance of a faith life. She loved the hope and the message of a heavenly kingdom. And I suppose that's exactly why we're gathering here this morning to claim the hope and celebrate the faith that she had in a God of Resurrections. The Easter faith that she sang about at church, that she prayed about, and that she trusted in, especially when she lost her husband, Tennyson, that she would see him again. That is our hope as Christians, friends. That though our bodies pass from this life and will eventually end, we who die will have a heavenly kingdom that we will call our home. This was told to us by Jesus. For the promise of scripture is that we will not die, but we will be changed. Christ will come and take us to our heavenly home himself. That's kind of the bittersweet message of today. The bitterness of all funeral services is that we know we have lost somebody who is dear to us. And we won't see them on this side of reality anymore. But the sweet part is, is that we know that they are home. In a place where there is no pain. Where they are with their beloveds again and where they are at peace. If anything should give us joy, on this day, it's that knowledge that they are home. For us today, it is enough to say thank you that God gave us this wonderful world in our life so that we could experience a little more joy. In the name of God, the Father, and God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. We can take a few minutes now, and I'll open it up. If anybody feels like they want to say a few words about a memory or a thought they had of Catherine, maybe um, a story that they would like to share, we're just going to take a minute or two if you, if you want or two. You don't have to come up to this, uh, this lectern if you do not want to. Uh, if you do so from your seat, I just ask that you raise your hand so I could call on you if you feel that. Anyone? 
if not, let us bow our heads. God of us all, your love, it never ends. When everything else in this world fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us today. To those who doubt, give your light. To those who have sinned, show your mercy. To those who are in sorrow, offer your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you. And to you, with your people on earth and in heaven, we offer you honor and glory now and forever. O oh God, everything that you have given us is yours. At first you gave Catherine to us, so now we give her back to you. So receive Catherine Willer into the arms of your mercy, and raise her up with all of your people, and receive us also, and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into the joy in the world to come. God of love, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with even this day, for the gift of joy in the days of health and strength, and for the gift of your abiding presence and promise in the days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and for friends, and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who welcomes us home when our life here is done. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. At the conclusion of the service, all here are welcome to go to the graveside in the Hummelstown Cemetery. And immediately following that, there will be a luncheon at Haas's, in which everybody is welcome to come to. The peace of God be with you all today and forevermore. Amen.